another day in tent life. In addition to Jasmine, hey we, we have Uncas hanging out today. <laughs> and the weather has given us a break. We're getting a little sunshine and it's just lovely. It, once again, it rained really hard all night long. Yeah. And started clearing up this morning. It's not like it's going to stay clear and get really warm or anything, but you take these moments of sunshine with gratefulness in your heart. Yes. <laughs> Nothing like a dry dog. Oh yeah, especially when they're in a small tent. Yes. <laughs> He's nice and dry. Yeah. And fluffy. Yes. Yeah. Stinky and crazy. To boot. Look <laughs> <laughs> at the little jasmine. There's our girl Jazz. So we went into town yesterday, into Talkeetna, and that was the plan to just go to Talkeetna. We had a whole agenda. I was going to upload the video the next episode and Jack was going to work on vehicles. Before we even got to town we got a message from my sister asking if, if we were planning to go to Wasilla because they needed somebody to pick up the Paxlovid for Billy and his mom and stepdad who have COVID. So of course we said sure we can do that. So our day turned into that, which was fine, and it was good to be able to help, and we just did our shopping there instead of Cubbies. But one of the, <laughs> there were two other little consequences of the fact that they have COVID and we couldn't go into the house. We were planning on um, showering, because we haven't had a real shower and washed hair and stuff since we came out. And we were also planning on grinding coffee. So we'd have a big bag of ground coffee, because we always buy the whole beans. <laughs> and so, um, I thought, well, we went to Fred Meyer's and we thought, well, well, we'll just pick up our own coffee grinder. We have power and we can grind our own coffee. And I stupidly suggested we get the hand grinder because that way we wouldn't need power to do it. Let me show you this. As you can see, it's very small. And I think it was designed by some lonely old man who only grinds about six beans a day for his one <laughs> cup of coffee. <laughs> so... It literally took us over an hour to grind enough coffee for this morning. So today, later, we're going to borrow John's coffee grinder. Fortunately, he has one down at the big cabin. Anyway, lesson learned there. <laughs> and so today, we're doing our, our bucket baths, and I washed my hair. So I'm getting fancy and even putting on a little makeup. We're just kind of hanging out, chilling. Jack's playing. He's learning how high the moon. That's his passion today. You don't know the words to the song. Like it's Gerald along. So last night, for some reason, our stove just stopped drawing and all the smoke was backing up into the tent and we just couldn't get it to stop and the drafts were open. It was something that was terribly wrong. <clears throat> Filled up the tent with smoke. It was miserable. So um, we decided, okay, just let the fire go out. We won't have a fire tonight and we'll take the stove apart tomorrow and see what's going on. The problem is um, this is the top section of pipe and this is the like built-in spark arrestor. But see, it's capped here on top, which is a sucky design, apparently, because what had happened is all the holes that, you know, make the fire draw had gotten clogged with, with creosote because we're burning pretty damp wood. And so it was effectively just stopped up on top. So what we're going to do, I think we've decided our best option is to bash out this end and just have this open 
because it's this design for this weather and this wood and this life <laughs> doesn't make sense. So Jack is going to do that right now. We're going to open this bitch up. <laughs> Not open this up, bitch. <laughs> That's right. He's taking a big speary metal thing. Because that really... <laughs> Might be better off doing it into the soft ground. There Sweet. you go. <laughs> A little key eye action. Open that thing like a tin can. <laughs> I think so. What happened? Wing. Okay, yay. That should take care of the problem. That really sucked. Here's the offending piece. And the other thing that happened yesterday <laughs> is we discovered that Pookie put a hole in our air mattress. <laughs> I waited too long to trim her nails. So we have a little tiny hole in the air mattress. Fortunately, Jack found it right away. And we put a piece of tape over it. And we weren't on the floor this morning, but that's also going to have to be dealt with. So we had a we had a really restful, relaxing day yesterday, and then all hell broke loose at bedtime, <laughs> basically. But we're still smiling. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Now we're going to put the stove back together, and we should be able to have a fire without killing ourselves. Woo! Well done. Thank you. Meet him, Raph. <laughs> okay, that was super successful. The stove is drawing perfectly again. We got a nice fire. The rain just started coming down again, so it's good we got that done right when we did. <laughs> Yay! That mystery is solved. And Jazz is here. Jazzy's here, curled up by the fire where she feels that she belongs. The high bush cranberries are ripe. And the forest starts to smell a little bit tangy interesting from their ripeness. They really scent up the place. High bush cranberries, rose hips, and back there is our chaga tree. Beautiful chunk of chaga. Oh the bounty. Gonna keep looking for some interesting mushrooms too. This is a berries and mushroom walk. And even the Devil's Club have beautiful berries. some rose hips. Ooh, they're nice and ripe and squishy. Gonna eat one. Mmm. Yeah. Seeds aren't good. You want to spit the seeds out. But the rose hips are yummy. Watermelon berries, for the most part, are done. Start to shrivel up. I am seeing some ripe blueberries. They're pretty small, though. Them. Not very good. Not very ripe yet. Kind of sour and small. The Amanitas are everywhere. Just everywhere. Oh, they're so cute. I don't know what these are, but they are plentiful. I doubt they're edible. I'm going to have to do some research, seeing all kinds of mushrooms here that I don't know anything about. And never munch on a hunch, as they say. But these guys are just everywhere. They're very pretty. These are everywhere. And here's some little bitty cute ones. I see another water chaga up there. 
A lot of times the chaga you see is too high up and you can't get to it. You see entire trees covered with these. It's on and on. Lots of these, and I think I see lots of these in Oregon too. Gills. And beyond that, I don't know what they are. Over here we have a white mushroom of some sort. And this too is a gilled mushroom. Could be some kind of amanita. Could be some kind of metal mushroom. Never munch on a hunch. There's a great big version of that. Yep, don't know. And there, of course, is another beautiful Amanita. They sure are bright. They just stand out like sunshine. There's a big boy. And here we have a little Rusula. It might be what they call a shrimp Rusula. Now, I know it's safe to take a little taste if it's got a very spicy taste to it, you don't want to eat it. Mmm. <laughs> Definitely spicy. More Amanitas because they're everywhere. Oh, what are those? Mmm. Mm. Don't know what that is. Not gills, not pores. Ooh, I have to look that one up. This is right behind the big cabin, right by the stack of lumber. And these are puffballs. Those are going to be good. Let's see what we got over here. More puffballs. Let's see what they look like. They almost feel like they're going already. I'm trying to break it with one hand. Yeah, they don't look good. I don't think I'd eat those puffballs. Yeah, there's some more blueberries, but once again, they're puny and not really ripe yet. Yeah, gotta try the good old tried and true patches across the lake. Oh, and what's this mushroom? This looks like one of these. Yeah, this is some kind of a wheat. I'll have to look these up. It's a little slimy on top. Not sure if this is a really good one to eat, but it's definitely a young enough specimen worth looking up. Okay, we've come to the part of the trail that is, that runs behind the south end of the lake. In other words, this is the area that exists behind the beaver dam that I showed you all in a previous video. And you can see where all those ferns are growing so beautifully. That's the actual dam. This is a swampy area, and this is part of the reason that the trail floods out pretty bad sometimes. It's this area that gets the worst in the spring, in breakup, and that's this is what John was dealing with. Oh, and you can see here the... Oh, it's actually moving, moving water here, running out of the lake. The lake is so high that we've got some running water back here. Interesting. Fortunately, I think uh, years ago, our neighbor Ralph actually put in a culvert somewhere, probably here, to help keep things from flooding. And the nice thing about walking on a muddy path like this is that you see all the animal tracks. If there were any bears that had come through any time in the last, oh gosh, I don't know, day, I would be seeing their tracks. Plus I got Jasmine with me, so feel very safe. Okay, I'm going to look up this bolete here, see what kind it is. Walk back the other way and let Jack know that we were out walking. He's helping John with the ATV right now, as usual. So I'll go check in on those guys. I hear music. I think they're listening to music and not working on ATVs.
partying down listening to rock music guitar players having a little summit boy this bush of watermelon berries is still truly amazing <laughs> Okay, John says this kind is not the kind you eat. It is called a toadstool. And that's kind of, I didn't, it didn't call to me to eat it, that's for sure. Eek. It is probably in the Belit family because it's got the pores rather than gills. But they call this a toadstool. So, good for toads, not for people. This is quite a beautiful flush of turkey tail. I'm not sure if they're the good to consume medicinally kind of turkey tail. Probably are. I do have a mushroom book with me. I'll check it out. And they are prolifically all down this log here. Look at that. Wow. You introduce this. Okay, so um, this song is about Chuggy and her adventure on coming to the lake with us. Braving the trip to Alaska, then braving the trip to going outside on the bus, then braving the trip to coming to the lake with us. And now she's, she's been rewarded by her bravery. She's just loving the in indoors and outdoor and the freedom that she has here. So... That's what this song is about. And we've been working on it all afternoon. Mm -hmm. One and uh, two. Shuggy, the yes. Pookie, the one-eyed warrior cat, who's keeping us safe from the shrews every night. Yes. <laughs> we know for a fact because we find them on the floor in the morning. <laughs> That's right. The relationship between Pookie and Jasmine has become pretty solid. They're okay with each other. Well, Jasmine was always okay with Pookie. Pookie has given her approval. 
sits there and stares at Jasmine sometimes while Jasmine is sleeping. Such a good girl, Pookie. Such a brave girl.